to chase a guy off stage, down the stairs, into the audience to get back my notes in front of a thousand people. Hi, I'm Tom Mullaney, and if you're new here, I'm a first-generation college student and also a professor of history for the past 14 years. This channel is all about how academia really works. In this episode, we're going to be talking about those one in a thousand failures that can totally throw off a job talk or an invited presentation. And be sure to stick around to the end because I'm going to give you a bonus link to show you how I prepare one of the key elements of every job talk and every presentation. Okay, let's jump in. So first, we have the problem of what I consider the small podium problem. This is one in which you arrive at the venue and you discover immediately that the lectern, which you're, where you're gonna be standing behind, which you're gonna have your laptop on, is very small. And this is a major problem for presenters for the following reasons. So many of us like to have our laptop in front of us when we present. We can see our slides, we have the keyboard there with the arrow keys or whatever to advance the slides, our notes, maybe a bottle of water, maybe pen and pencil, whatever. But what happens when you can't fit all of those items on the lectern? Well, in moments of anxiety, which all presentations involve, some people, and I've done this, try to improvise a solution by putting the laptop down, opening up their keynote or their PowerPoint or whatever, and then precariously balancing their notes on top of the keyboard. Now, this is a bad idea, and I know firsthand. First of all, Many of these lecterns are inclined, which means that because the surface of the keyboard is slippery, your notes are constantly sliding down or risking sliding down. But even more than that is that you can inadvertently try to take a note on the piece of paper or maybe kind of touch it in some way and inadvertently press one of the keys on the keyboard that's underneath your notes. And this could minimize the window, advance a slide, open up some function you didn't even know that PowerPoint had, and suddenly you're scrambling in front of 50 people, 100 people, 1,000 people with your presentation software, um, again, in a moment of anxiety. So how do we fix this? It has a simple, low-cost solution, which is a USB wireless advancer. I'm gonna link some in the description below that I've used or that I've heard very good things about. But basically what it is, it's a small remote control, typically with either two up to four buttons, advanced slide forward, advanced slide backward, and sometimes it has a built-in laser pointer, and sometimes it has a built-in button to black out the screen. It also has a piece that you plug into the USB port of your laptop. Now, why is this the saving grace of this, uh, this situation? Well, if you get to the presentation venue and you see that the lectern is really small, the very next words out of your mouth could be, oh, thanks for showing me the venue. Is there a way we could find a small coffee table or even like a stool that we could place next to the lectern? And why? Well, you can place your laptop on that coffee table or stool tilt the screen so that you can see it from where you're standing. But because you have the USB advancer, you don't need to have the laptop in front of you. So you can have your reading notes, you can have your pen and paper, you can have whatever else you need, but you can still advance the slides safely and securely in that scenario. And suddenly you can keep your peace of mind and continue delivering the best presentation you can. Two, now some of you in tip one might have said, not a problem, you know why? I don't use notes, I don't use printed out notes. I use the notes that are in my PowerPoint slide because you know you can have like the presenter view where the slide is up top and then the notes are in the bottom, so you've got it covered. Well, no, you don't. And if you stick around to the rest of this video, I am going to urge everybody to make sure you have printed notes and stick around and I'll tell you why. But let's say that you have your notes on your screen, but you arrive at the venue and the problem is not a small lectern, it's the fact that the room where you are working does not have a built-in projection screen. Most of the time, if you go to a university or a college or a museum or a library, typically they'll have a room that they use for presentations. And so therefore there's kind of a projection, uh, a projector 
just bolted to the ceiling or maybe in the back of the room, wherever it is. And what that means is that somewhere either on the podium or in the wall behind you or on the floor, there is a plug, an HDMI plug typically, but also you could have other forms. And then you just run that plug from the wall into your laptop and everything works. But, and this happens a lot actually, more than one of the thousand, is that the room in question does not have a dedicated projector. Rather, they have a portable projector, which is just in the back of the room, plugged in, and then shooting the image at a screen to your left or to your right. Now, why is this a problem? Well, unless you have a 100-foot HDMI cable, you're gonna have to leave your laptop all the way at the other side of the room so that the cord can attach your laptop to the projector. So you're not even gonna be able to see your slides or see your notes. When this happens, uh, and this has happened to me on a few occasions, and I've seen it happen to other people, the typical outcome is super awkward. The presenter is no longer in the front of the room. Instead, they're sitting in the back of the room next to their computer sl advancing slides. It feels like a 1920s lantern slide show. Next slide, next slide. Oh, that's the other thing that can happen, is that the presenter is up there and they're, they're kind of barking commands to someone who has been you know, enrolled into this just hitting a keyboard button and literally yelling out, next slide, next slide, next slide. It's like, what is this, 1942? What's going on here? So, in order to resolve this second one of the thousand failure moment, which has happened to me more than once, you need to have the USB slide advancer I just mentioned before and a printed out copy of your notes. You cannot rely on the notes inside Keynote. Now, treat that as a backup. If, if you're used to using those notes, by all means, if the venue allows it, go with what works, but make sure that you have a backup of this and that you have practiced using a printed out version of your notes in the event that that's not your thing. Three, now let's say that you do use printed out notes. Um, you have your slide advancer, all of that is fine. Small lectern, no problem. Room without a dedicated projector, I got that. What about rooms with extremely low light? I often find that in museum presentations or at keynote presentations or large societies, evening events, that the organizers are kind of going after this almost TED Talk vibe of, you know, really dramatic lighting. So the house lights are extremely low, and even on the stage, there's just like one spot on the on the presenter. And, you know, that looks great from the outside, and it, and it kind of gives a gravitas to the situation, so whatever. But it is, or can be, a nightmare for the presenter. And here is the problem. In the case when people print out their notes, Oftentimes, I mean so often, they make the huge mistake of using the same font and layout that they would as if they were submitting a manuscript to a journal or, I don't know, writing an email. You do not want to use 12-point font, one-inch margins, double spacing. You do not want these things when you're talking about a uh, document that you're going to be reading aloud. So this is going to be the bonus, so make sure you stay to the end of the video because I'm going to give you a download link that shows the format that I have been using for more than a decade and which has served me flawlessly throughout that process. In a nutshell, my format is 16 point 18 point font. For me, I like to use a serif font. It helps with legibility. Single spaced because 16, 18 point font is gonna take up a lot of real estate and you don't wanna be constantly turning pages because each page has so few words on it. So single spaced, 16 to 18 point font, and here is a key with minimal margins. I actually, in Microsoft Word, I just set all of the margins to zero as if I don't want you know any margin. And then Microsoft Word will correct me, say like, no, you can't do that. We've gotta add at least, I don't know, 0.2 inches to each side. So I just put 0, 0, 0, 0, top, bottom, left, right. Microsoft Word fixes it for me, the absolute minimum it'll accept. I say, okay. That is my reading copy. So it kind of looks like a children's book. And the reason is, is that when you are in the condition of presenting, A, it's high anxiety, but B, you cannot rely on the idea that it's gonna be well lit. You might be looking down 
and see a dimly lit piece of paper. If you have like a 12 point fonts, you know, double spaced one inch margins, you're gonna be blah, 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 and looking up and then looking down and being like, holy shit, where am I on the page? Now, there is an addendum to this, which is vitally important. If you take scenario three, low light, and then you combine it, because that can happen with scenarios one and two. Lectern is small, your computer is far away. Well, how do you know when to advance to the next slide if you can't see your PowerPoint? Well, what I always do is right after I print out this children's book format of my talk, I go through my slides with my document and a red pen. You can use red, you can use green. It should be bright and really easy to spot. And what I do quite simply is say, okay, this is slide one. Well, obviously the presentation starts on slide one. So I just write one with a circle around it in the margins. So you can use the left margin or the right margin, just be consistent. And then you say, okay, uh, all right, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I think this is where I advance. Check it out. Yep, okay, two. Keep going. All right, this is where I'm gonna advance to the next slide. And maybe it's like, okay, this is actually gonna be slide three, four, five, and six. So maybe I'll just write three dash six. And I like to put a circle around them just so I can really see. Okay, number four is a personal favorite because it was one of the most embarrassing moments of my career thus far. The best way to tell you what this problem is is by telling you a little story. I promise to keep it brief. So I got to the venue, I go up to the lectern, I set up my laptop, set up my notes, I feel comfortable, and then it's kind of showtime. So people start coming in. Anyone that's watching who's given a presentation or seen one knows that prior to the speaker beginning, someone always introduces them. Now the reason I bring this up is because every one of those speakers, they're going to have notes. That could be your CV, a actual uh, kind of reading script of something that they want to say more substantively. They walk up to the podium, they've got their notes. They say, our speaker today is Tom Mullaney, he's professor of history, blah, blah, blah. Please join me in welcoming our speaker. And everyone starts clapping. What do they do? Well, they take their notes, they scoop them up from the lectern and then walk off and kind of nod, maybe shake your hand, and then they take their seat. What happens if you leave your notes up there, like before the talk started? I have had to chase a guy off stage, down the stairs, into the audience to get back my notes in front of an audience of about a thousand people. I had to do the walk of shame all the way back up the stairs to the stage, back to the lectern, and then try to recover some kind of sense of gravitas so that I could begin my talk. It's a long-winded story and I apologize for that, but the point of it is do not leave your notes on the lectern. There are two things that you do not want to leave on the lectern prior to actually getting up there. You wanna keep them on your person. One is the reading copy of your notes. Do not leave them on the lectern because they can walk off. And the other one is your slide advancer. Everyone has one of these things. No one quite remembers what theirs looks like. Um, maybe deep down inside we're all kleptomaniacs. I don't know what the reason is, but they walk off too. So tip four is, Keep those notes with you. Tip number five, this is a kind of a micro fail, but it happens all the time and yet seemingly no one has picked up on this. Remember I told you that there is a function in the USB advancer uh, that has a laser pointer and it's great if the screen that is being used allows it with the, with the kind of declining cost of television screens or computer screens, more and more venues are starting to try to use an actual monitor for the presentation slides rather than a projection screen. Now, cool, the resolution is way better. You get way crisper um, imagery. The lighting of the room doesn't matter. You don't get weird aspect ratio distortions. All good, all great, but there's a problem. You cannot see the red dot of a laser on these things. I have done this myself and I have seen this so many times. Someone in their talk needs to point out a particular feature of a photograph, a diagram, whatever it is. They take their, their pointer, they look behind them, they point it, and the, and the laser is gone. It's, it's gone. Now what's happening is that it's been either absorbed or refracted into a bunch of completely invisible you know, beams 
but they stand there for a good five seconds, which in presentation time is like a lifetime. Think radio, you know, five seconds is a long time. They're like, like um, uh, you know, it's, uh, ooh, eh, eh. And, then they, and then they, and then they try to like make sure that the laser works. They like point it at their hand or they point it at the ceiling. They're like, oh yeah, it works. And the problem is, is that no matter what you do, it's never going to show up on that screen. So if in your presentation, when you're practicing it prior to the talk, if you notice that there is some part of your talk that requires you're going, you to point out a feature of an image or a slide that you plan to project, you need to have an A-B scenario. A, if the screen will permit you to point a laser at it and then just go forward, but B, what if it won't? Now, if it won't, there are simple scenarios for it. You could simply walk over to the screen. You might, the mic might drop out and you might have to project really loudly for that one moment, or maybe you just stop talking, point, walk over, point at the screen and then walk back and then continue talking. Or if you wanna be absolutely safe, make sure to prepare your slides in such a way that if you want to draw attention to a particular thing, you add an element, you add a red circle. You, you have the picture and then the very next slide is the same picture with a red circle or a red square around the feature you want. The long and short of it is, is that the era in which you could safely rely on laser pointers is over. We're in this weird in-between stage where sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And you need to be prepared for both because it looks kind of silly when someone fights with their laser pointer for a good 10 seconds. Okay, so for those of you who have uh, stuck around to the end, there is a, uh, a bonus download that I wanna make available. And this is what I use as the formatting for my reading copies for presentations I've been giving over 10 years. You know, job talks, I'm talking about keynotes, invited presentations, hundreds and hundreds of them. And this is the format that has worked really well. Tell me what works, what doesn't, leave a comment in the description below. And I'd love to hear from you. I shared with you some of my most embarrassing moments, my failed moments in presentations and talks. What about yours? What are the ones that you would like to share with the world so that other people don't repeat the same mistake you did? And then what did you do to fix them or anticipate them the next time? How did you make sure that you were never gonna make that mistake again? Well, I hope you found this useful. If you did, please consider giving the video a like, subscribe if this is your thing, and I will see you in the next video. See ya.